There was Jackie Robinson in baseball. There was Wendell Scott in NASCAR, but Leonard Miller was able to take it to a whole new level. Well, I think if you look back uh, across uh, history and you look at the contributions that Lynn Miller and his Black American Racers team made, uh, you know, it can't be underscored enough that uh, this was truly a pioneering effort. And they're doing something that simply wasn't done at this scale, at this level previously, by Black Americans. The cars ran at 140 or 150 miles an hour, inches apart. <laughs> When a black driver gets into any racing series, it's a wild card. Whites couldn't even perceive blacks in auto racing, especially at the, at the top levels. We were proud to run as black American racers. They had a mission to try to break the race barrier in racing. It's so difficult for a black racing team to break into the sport. It takes such a ton of money. You're not gonna go racing for 10 bucks. We had Kenny Wright driving Mr. Diplomat. Anything that made a lot of horsepower and a lot of noise and went faster, I loved it. My father was working with a driver in Los Angeles called Benny Scott, and he drove a you know, 190 mile per hour Grand Prix car. I'd raced for probably five years, and this is the first time in my racing career that I've actually had first class equipment. We just set uh, four lap records at Laguna Seca Monterey. This was kind of history in itself in that this is the first time that a black driver sat on the pole. Uh, articles were written in magazines such as Auto Week, Car and Driver, of course, Ebony Magazine did a, a feature on Benny, which I think was very solid. And I was like, wow, these guys are in a in Playboy magazine. This was a major inroad into what had been historically for the preceding 70 years, essentially an all-white dominated sport. What I saw was a team on the up, moving up. And then all of a sudden the plug was pulled. So you pull the plug, why? 